zones of the pulmonary blood flow. In an upright position, when the effects of gravity are present, the lung apices are relatively underperfused and the lung bases are relatively overperfused because of the gravity. In the systemic vasculature, the pressure gradients that trigger the blood flow are the arterial and the venous pressures, but whereas in the pulmonary vasculature, the alveolar pressure is the major factor that governs the blood flow. So taking this statement into consideration, the lung is divided totally into three zones, zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. So, which shows the differences in how the blood flow is divided in the upright lung. Let us talk about the zone 1 blood flow first. So here, zone 1 is defined by the areas in the lung where alveolar pressure exceeds the pulmonary arterial pressure. And zone 1 is not observed in the normal healthy human lung because pulmonary arterial pressure apart we can say exceeds alveolar pressure in all parts of the lungs. So mainly due to the lack of perfusion that occurs in this zone it quickly leads to tissue necrosis and also lung damage. What are zone 1 conditions? Where the partial pressure of alveoli is greater than apart then the partial pressure of venous blood which occurs mainly when the hydrostatic arterial and the venous pressures are lower than the alveolar pressures. This can be seen in the lung apices where the arterial hydrostatic pressures are reduced relative to the pressures of the arteries supplying the lower lung fields. In these conditions the blood vessel is completely collapsed and there is no blood flow during the systole and diastole. So this is what is about zone 1. And next is zone 2. Zone 2 is defined as those areas of the lung where pulmonary arterial pressure exceeds that of alveolar pressure. But however, we know that the alveolar pressure exceeds the pulmonary venous pressure. This zone has an intermittent blood flow during the cardiac cycle with no blood flow during diastole, which means majority of the blood flow at the zone is seen only during systole and no blood flow during diastole. It is exhibited by the upper two-thirds of the lungs, where the alveolar pressure causes collapse of the pulmonary capillaries during diastole. So what happens is the pulmonary capillary pressure during systole exceeds alveolar pressure resulting in the perfusion during systole. And next is about zone 3 blood flow. Zone 3 is defined as those areas of the lungs where alveolar pressure falls below the pulmonary venous pressure. So this zone has a continuous blood flow during the cardiac cycle. So this type of blood flow is a characteristic of lung bases which are situated right below the heart. And the pulmonary capillary pressures over here are greater than the alveolar pressures during systole and diastole. This means the pulmonary capillaries remain patent and open throughout the cardiac cycle to receive perfusion. So what is the important clinical note about this zone? Zone 3 conditions are exploited during hemodynamic monitoring with the use of swan glands or pulmonary artery catheter. The catheter inserted through the central vein is advanced into the pulmonary artery what you can see over here and there is an inflated balloon at the distal tip of the catheter that allows it to wedge into the distal branch of the pulmonary artery. In zone 3 conditions, the static column of the blood extends from the catheter through the pulmonary capillary bed to the left atrium and finally to the left ventricle. And when the balloon is inflated, the wedge pressure or we can say the pulmonary artery occlusion pressure is obtained and this is an indirect measurement of the left ventricular and diastolic pressure. So this is what is the clinical note what you need to know about zone 3 and this is what is about the zone 1, zone 2, zone 3 blood flows that is to the lungs.